Chapter 436, Getting Butchered Hu Qingsong's mouth twitched a few times. Recalling what Xue Chao had said before, he suddenly called out, Eldest brother Tang, I want to see your garage. Xue Chao said you have good cars here. Eh, Yu Kai, what are you staring dully for? Looking blankly at Tang Xiao, Yu Kai moved his lips, murmuring, Eldest brother Tang's villa is one of the most luxurious villas in Blue Star Villa Complex. I told all of you before that there are some villas here priced above nine digits. This is exactly one of them. Hiss, everyone gasped for cold air after hearing this. Nine digits, that was hundreds of millions. A villa worth hundreds of millions of yuan just for Tang Xiao to have a place to stay when he was studying in Shanghai. How rich was his family, exactly? Don't look distracted like that, will ya? Let's go inside. Tang Xiao said with a smile. Hu Ching Song, who hadn't forgotten what he just asked, quickly pulled on Tang Xiao and said loudly, Eldest brother Tang, don't ignore me. Just show us your garage quickly. I want to make sure whether old Xue was boasting or not. Tang Xiao hesitated for a moment before pressing the garage key button. In any case, everyone already knew that this was his villa, and not how many cars were there. Since they wanted to see them, he might as well let them have a look just the same. As the electric garage door opened, Hu Ching Song, Yu Kai, and the others rushed towards it. Only Tang Xiao and Mu Weining stayed in their spots. You don't seem to want everyone to know that you have a villa here, do you, Tang Xiao? Mu Weining asked in a soft voice. We are fellow students. I was afraid their feelings would be affected due to money and things of value. Tang Xiao produced a wry smile and said, But since Xue Chao has talked about this inadvertently, I think it won't be good to keep concealing it. Otherwise, they would have a knot in their hearts once they learn about this one day. Therefore, just let them know right away, then. That idea of yours is correct, if you ask me, Mu Weining said with a smile. Perhaps after they learn that there's such a wealth disparity between you and them, maybe they will be a bit envious or jealous. Envious people can be friends, while the jealous ones will slowly become estranged. But one day when they learn by themselves that you turned out to have a villa here, along with many luxury cars, even though your family or you yourself are very rich, maybe they will really have a knot inside their hearts. They will think that you never even thought of them as friends since you were concealing everything from them. That's right. Tang Xiao nodded. Heavens. Am I not dreaming? For parking spaces for four luxurious cars in the garage, and each of them is worth tens of millions. God damn it. If I knew that eldest brother Tang had these many luxurious cars, why would I buy that small broken car? Hu Qingsong's mournful voice full of thick northeastern accent came from the garage. What luxurious and extravagant cars. Eldest brother Tang is simply a rich bachelor. Just, just the total value of these four cars is something tons of people are unable to obtain in their lifetime. Oh heaven. Oh earth. Why am I not born a woman? If I were one, I have to marry eldest brother Tang and become the rich lady. Zhao Liang roared out after Hu Qing Song. Even Li Xinjie exclaimed, Wow, these cars are so handsome. If I could have one of them, I'm afraid I would have fallen into a dream and woke up smiling. Outside, Tang Xiao and Mu Weining exchanged glances. While Tang Xiao had a forced dry smile all over his face, Mu Weining had a smile with hints of teasing, as she said, Well, I dare say that if you don't warn them not to expose it to bystanders. I'm afraid most of the students studying in our university will find out that a nouveau riche freshman has silently come to study, in their campus. By then, you will become a hot potato, and the girls will be in hot pursuit of you. I'm afraid they will be as numerous as the carps crossing the river. Rest assured. Tang Xiao forced a smile and said, I'll find a way to make them zip their mouths. Quickly, Yu Kai and the others came out of the garage. Their eyes lit up when they looked at Tang Xiao. Straightforward as he always was, Yu Kai said, eldest brother Tang, you gotta lend me one of your luxurious cars to flirt with girls. 
Yeah, I also need one. Me too. Hu Qingsong and Zhao Liang spoke out in unison. No problem with that. But you gotta swear to me that you must never disclose anything you hear and see tonight to anyone, ever. Tang Xiu said with a smile, I don't want unnecessary troubles because of my house and cars. Sure thing. I promise. No problem. The trio promised enthusiastically. As for Xue Chao, he scratched the back of his head and said in a muffled voice, I don't have a driver's license, neither do I like to pick up girls. These cars probably don't have any use for me. Well, if you work hard, I can help speak some good things for you, so you can have your salary doubled. Tang Xiu chuckled and spoke to him. Hooray! Long live boss Tang! Xue Chao got excited immediately. Tang Xiu then shifted his gaze toward Li Xinjie and Hu Wei, and said with a smile, As for you, beauties, I hope you can help to keep it secret. A cunning glint flashed in Li Xinjie's eyes. She stretched three fingers and said, If you can agree to three conditions, I promise you I won't reveal everything I see tonight to anyone. You're really ruthless, girl. Tang Xiu forced a smile and said, Go say it. I won't decline if it's within my capabilities. First, you gotta treat me to a meal for a week. No need to be extravagant, though. Just having a bite in the campus cafeteria will do, Li Xinjia laughed and continued, the second one is, you gotta spare some time to give me a ride with that hooded supercar of yours to stroll around the campus. Seeing Li Xinjia stop talking up to there, Tang Xiu immediately nodded and said, treating for meals is not a problem. The task of driving to take you for a ride can be given to you Kai and Hu Ching Song. Tell me the third one. I haven't thought about it enough. I'll tell you later. Li Xinjia smiled and said, however, if you can promise me these three conditions, I can help you if you want to pursue our first bell mu in the future, though. Tang Xiu secretly rolled his eyes. Although Mu Weining was indeed beautiful like a fairy, he didn't have the slightest of the kind of feeling between man and woman toward her. Speaking about pursuing her? What a joke! Immediately, he turned to look at Hu Wei, and asked, What about you? Mine is the same as Xinjie's first two conditions. Hu Wei said with a smile, The third one is, After we graduate and we can't find a job, you must help us. Besides, you already helped Xue Chao in any case. Helping us once more won't be a problem for you, no? I'll definitely help if you have the skills and capabilities, Tang Xiu laughed and said. Rejoicing, Hu Wei replied, a gentleman's words are as good as gold. I'll hold on to your words. Got it. Tang Xiu agreed. Immediately, he looked at them and said with a wry smile, to be honest. I brought you guys here to stay for the night in my place out of good intentions. Never thought that I would be butchered by you all. How was it for you guys after you got my heart vexed? <laughs> everyone burst into laughter. Apart from Mu Weining and Xue Chao, everyone else was excited over little things. After everyone eventually got used to it, Mu Weining's group of three girls picked a customized bedroom. She took out one bed and its bedding, laid the bed out, and then divided the room afterward. In addition to Mu Haoying and Xue Chao, the rest of them entered a villa. Finally, when everyone got used to it, the three girls took out a futon from a room where she had been laying. After she had laid out the bed, she divided the rooms. However, everyone was still in the mood for having fun tonight. Since they also came to Tang Xiu's big villa, they still had much energy left. Under Xue Chao's summons, everyone then came to the chess room and played cards there. Ring, ring, ring. Tang Xiao and Mu Weining didn't join them, and the two went to the kitchen. After finding that there was no hot tea, Tang Xiao personally boiled good tea and sent it to the chess room. He and Mu Weining also went to the neighboring block to buy a lot of snacks, and then returned to the villa. Huh? What happened to you guys? When the two just returned, they saw everyone come out of the chess room with unsightly looks. It's Fian, Li Xinjia said, 
she just called me, saying that she broke up with Ma Jun and got beaten by him. Furthermore, she was forcibly dragged to the hotel. She called us while secretly hiding in the bathroom. Tang Xiao's complexion changed and said in a heavy voice, which hotel are they in? We'll rush over there now. It's the Jasmine Hotel nearby. Li Xinjia quickly said. Let's go. Tang Xiao said. Jasmine Hotel, room hashtag 406. Jiang Fian locked herself in the bathroom. Ma Jun outside the door incessantly kicked the door, cursing unpleasant things to hear. Your heart is dead. I must break up with you. Jiang Fian shouted. She was emotionally distraught, affecting the injured corner of her mouth. The pain immediately made her shed tears. You bitch. You got bewitched by another man tonight, didn't you? And you want to dump this father? No fucking way. Even if this father is bored with you, you can never escape from my palm the entire of your fucking life. Ma Jun's voice turned louder and louder as he threw curses at her. You, you asshole. Jiang Fian's heart felt like it was stabbed by a knife. The pain she felt made her tremble. In fact, the feelings she had toward Ma Jun was still there. If Ma Jun had coaxed her well tonight, she would have given up on her idea of breaking up with him. Nevertheless, never once had she thought that not only would Ma Jun hit her, he also cursed at her. The heart-rending pain. Broken-hearted. Ma Jun had thoroughly driven her into despair. A few minutes later, Ma Jun was no longer kicking the bathroom's door because he had indeed drank booze too much tonight. Coupled with his ordinary physical fitness, he finally got tired and sat on the carpet. Time slowly passed by. When the room's door was opened from the outside, the hotel's lobby manager took the room card and quickly stepped back. He watched Ma Jun, who was sitting outside the bathroom, drunk and reek of liquor, with anger in his eyes. Hu Qingsong and Yu Kai were the first to come in. After the duo rushed into the room, they seized Ma Jun's arms separately, stopping his shouts, and restrained him. Ma Jun, where's Fian? Li Xinjia had been classmates and good sisters with Jiang Fian for four years. They had a deep affection for each other. Therefore, after she stepped in front of Ma Jun's, she was the first to ask him the question. Bam! Just as Li Xinjia's voice fell, Jiang Fian, whose face was obviously beaten and injured, with blood stains on her arm, opened the bathroom door from the inside. She burst into tears. Xinjia! Woo woo woo. Seeing her miserable state, Li Xinjia looked distressed and furious. She raised her leg and kicked Ma Jun's crotch fiercely. While Ma Jun was screaming, she pulled Jiang Fian along for a few steps, hugging and consoling her. Upon seeing the scene before him, Tang Xiao secretly sighed inwardly. He then turned to look at the lobby manager and said, Call the police. He kidnapped a female student and did it in your hotel. I think it's best for you to call the police. All right. The lobby manager nodded and took his mobile phone out. Chapter 437 The Good for Nothing Man Though at this time his crotch was extremely painful, Ma Jun panicked after hearing the dialogue between Tang Xiao and the lobby manager. He exclaimed, Don't. Don't call the cops. I was just joking with my girlfriend. It's true. I'm not telling lies. Tang Xiao gave a hand signal to the lobby manager and sneered, You were just joking with your girlfriend? You were joking and she got her face bruised, even has blood stains on her arms? See for yourself how many footprints there are on her body. You kicked her a few times, didn't you? Had we not been come here in time, would you still lock her in? Fear struck Ma Jun's heart. He was afraid that these people around him would report to the police, since he really had hit Jiang Fian. What was more, he also used Jiang Fian's naked photos to threaten her, so that he could bring her here, and forbid her to leave. Once he was reported to the police, he, who only had one year left to graduate, would highly likely be expelled directly from the campus. He could even taste that he might spend some time in jail. 
In case that outcome happened, he was all done for the rest of his life. Suddenly, without him realizing, Ma Jun was able to exert a surge of strength. He could even break free from Yu Kai and Hu Qingsong's containment. He then rushed in front of Jiang Fian, kneeling down and grabbed her calf, shouting, Fian, I made mistakes. I was wrong. I shouldn't have drunk too much. I shouldn't have hit you. But you want to break up with me, so I got brokenhearted and did it. Please, help me ask them to not call the police. A look of disgust and loathing filled Jiang Fian's eyes. She tried to kick him, yet her legs were being held by him. She could only repress her anger and heartrending grief. Seeing that Jiang Fian didn't respond to him, Ma Jun pleaded anxiously yet again, Fian, please have a look at so many years we have spent together as lovers. Please, I beg you. I really don't want you to break up with me. I. I promise you. I'll also delete your naked photos. I won't spread them out. Pa. Jiang Fian's palm flew and slapped his face fiercely. She felt ashamed and resentful, hearing him mention her naked photos at this time. Fian, it's your choice whether or not we must report this to the police, Tang Shou said. Whatever it is, we'll respect your decision. Jiang Fian's complexion kept changing. Only after half a minute passed, did she finally reply in a bitter voice, let it be. As long as he deletes those pictures and no longer pesters me anymore, just let bygones be bygones. Tang Xiao nodded and ordered firmly, delete those pictures now. As though he had been granted general pardon, Ma Jun hurriedly took his mobile out from his pocket and handed it over to Tang Xiao, saying, the photos are in there, you can delete them. Tang Xiao, however, didn't take it. He didn't want to delete those photos himself, for he would definitely see Jiang Fian's nude body. Instead, it was Li Xinjia who took the mobile and handed it to Jiang Fian. Taking the gadget, Jiang Fian quickly found tons of her nude photos in the phone's gallery album. The photos were secretly taken when she and Ma Jun were outside. Had it not been for tonight's matter, she wouldn't have even found out such a shitty thing. What made her more ashamed and resentful was that there were unexpectedly two footage videos taken outside those dozens of photos. After deleting all of them, Jiang Fian smashed Ma Jun's mobile phone and forcefully kicked his hand. As she burst into tears, she called out, Ma Jun, you and I no longer related. You for yourself, and I for myself. We are nothing but strangers from now. Having said that, she pulled Li Xinjia's hand and half ran out the door. Tang Xiao shook his head secretly as he also turned around to leave the room. Mu Weining and Hui also came out. Yu Kai, Hu Qingsong, Zhao Liang, and Xue Chao, however, did not. A short while after, Ma Jun's screams were audible in the room. Needless to say, Yu Kai and the gang were beating him. The lobby manager didn't bother to stop them, because he was also someone who hated a man who bullied and took advantages of girls. If it weren't because of his position, he would have punched Ma Jun as well. Following that, everyone left the Jasmine Hotel and drove back to Blue Star Villa Complex. Jiang Fian was in a foul mood and didn't ask much, though she was rather curious about the place. 12.30 a.m. Tang Xiao was sitting cross-legged, cultivating on the bed when someone knocked on his door. After putting on his pajamas, he opened the door and found Mu Weining standing outside. You haven't rested yet? Tang Xiao was a bit surprised. Mu Weining shook her head and smiled. After entering his room, she said, they are currently comforting Fian. I need to talk to you about something. That's why I came here. What is it? Tang Xiao smilingly asked. I remembered you wanted everyone to keep tonight's matter secret. They all put forward their conditions, right? But I haven't mentioned mine, Mu Weining said. For a moment, Tang Xiao's expression turned dull. With an expression of being at a loss whether he should cry or laugh, he immediately said, Weining, tell me. Do you really have to do it, too? I'm quite vexed and butchered already, 
how can you even be so excited to keep pouring oil on the fire, anyway? Well, I only have one condition, and it's very easy. Mu Weining chuckled and said. And that is? Tang Xiao asked. Tang Xiao, the magnificent Tang Corporation's God's Nectar is very hard to get. I talked to my grandpa on the phone two days ago, and he talked to me a few times, as well as sent people to line up to buy that wine. He only got a few bottles, yet they were snatched up by my dad and uncles. So, I can only use the back door to you. Can I buy some God's Nectar from the Magnificent Tang Corp as a token of my filial piety for my grandpa, please? Ah. Uh. It turned out to be this matter. Tang Xiao laughed and said, no problem. I'll call Kong Xia later. Just give me the address where your grandpa lives. You really agreed? Mu Weining was surprised and said, then I'll transfer the money to your account. Ah. Uh. Right. It should be the previous account you gave me, right? Forget about the money. Tang Xiao waved his hand and said, You're my cousin's boudoir friend, and a senior alumnus of mine as well. Anyways, are ten boxes enough? Yeah, that will be enough. A smile appeared on the corner of Mu Weining's mouth as she nodded and said, Since you don't want to take the money, do you want me to wait in your bedroom tonight? Tang Xiao straightly seized her arm. As her complexion changed, he pushed her toward the outside of the door, causing Mu Weining to look dull and dumbfounded. He then said, If I were to take the first bell of Beijing, the first campus flower of Shanghai University, I don't know how many men will see and think of me as a thorn in their eyes. I'm nothing but a timid guy who doesn't like getting into trouble. So you shouldn't bother me, either should you court trouble for me. Having said that, Tang Xiao stepped backward for two steps, and then closed the door. As for Mu Weining, she stared blankly at the shut door, tongue-tied and dumbfounded. It took some time for her to finally sober up from her days. A dazzling and beautiful smile then appeared on her flawless and stunning face, like a blooming flower. The next morning, when Tang Xiao finished cultivating, and after taking a shower and dressing up, he came to the living room, and found that there was only Jiang Fian there, sitting in a daze on the sofa. You woke up so early, eh? Tang Xiao approached her and said with a smile. Coming back from her reverie, Jiang Fian watched Tang Xiao, who was smiling gently. She nodded a response and said, I can't sleep well. Might as well wake up early. Tang Xiao, thanks for everything yesterday. It's nothing. If anything, that was what I had to do anyway. Tang Xiao shook his head as he cheerfully said, But you yourself mustn't be sad, you know. I remembered seeing a girl's post on the internet, whoever it is. One is unlikely to come across several bastards in their lifetime, as long as one rubs their eyes and lets them shine afterward. You can move on and find a good man for yourself. I know. And I'm actually not that sad. Jiang Fian nodded and said, but I'm really glad to see through to his true face earlier than not. Otherwise, I would have ended up miserable one day in the future if I were to marry him. You've thought it through well, it seems. Tang Xiao smiled and said, Anyways, you gotta rest well. I'll go out to buy breakfast. I'll go with you, then. Jiang Fian got up from the sofa and said quickly. After hesitating, Tang Xiao nodded his okay and said, all right. We have many people today, so we must buy a lot of breakfast. You can help me get some and bring them back. Jiang Fian nodded with a sad smile. The bruises on several areas of her face had faded quite a lot after resting for a night. She left the villa with Tang Xiao. The duo didn't take a car, but instead took a stroll outside of the villa complex, and then bought a lot of food for breakfast at the nearby block. Tang Xiao, can I ask you something? While carrying a lot of takeaway breakfast on the way back, Jiang Fian inquired of Tang Xiao while they walked shoulder to shoulder. Just ask. Tang Xiao replied with a smile. Do you have a girlfriend? Jiang Fian asked. Stunned, Tang Xiao stared blankly. 
Kong Xia's face appeared inside his mind. But in an instant, he dispelled her beautiful face from his mind, shaking his head and said, I can be considered to have no girlfriend. Curious as she was, Jiang Fian continued, how can you have no girlfriend with such a good premise and condition of yours? Besides, what did you mean by saying you can be considered to have no girlfriend? After staying silent for a short while, Tang Xiao said lightly, I indeed have a good impression of and am interested in a certain girl. But I'm fated to be unable to give her any status or happiness, hence the reason. What's more, I have a ton of things to deal with, and romance is the last thing I want to waste my time on. This matter is a subject I will talk about after I graduate in the future. You're really a weirdo. Jiang Fian looked at him incredulously and continued, Who among youngsters nowadays does not want to think and talk about love? With how well off you are, countless women would weep and cry, wanting you to be close to them should you wish to find a girlfriend, no? The matter with one's heart and love is not child's play, nor has it been a trifling matter. Tang Xiu chuckled and said, A man who would be bound to be responsible has to have the resolve to have it. I myself am not ready to be someone with responsibility yet. Therefore, even if women all over the world came over to me, I can't and I won't accept them. As a matter of fact, I think that as long as one is alive, it's not necessarily worth it for them to insist on getting into a romantic relationship, for there are tons of things in life that are worth us doing and caring about. What else is there? Jiang Fian asked blankly. Family, friendship, career, and many others, Tang Shou said. But, isn't it more perfect if you also have a romantic relationship and the like? Jiang Fian wondered. You tell me, what qualifications do youngsters nowadays need to have a love life, anyway? Tang Shou was silent for a moment and asked, let us take the simplest issue here. Your love life requires time, and you will also need money for that. As for what I think, it would be much better for the youngsters to learn more and study more while they are still young, for it will be good for them to have a foothold in society. But being concerned with love and romance, yet you still spend the money from your parents, just what qualification do you think you have to talk about having a love life? Tang Xiao paused for a moment, freeing one of his hands to take out a cigarette, and lit it. After taking a couple of deep drags on it, his gaze fell on a breakfast shop not far away, and the couple who were very busy inside it. Chapter 438, Cheering on Waning. Tang Xiao's vision turned a bit blurry. He was seeing the busy figure of his mother when she was working hard to manage her small restaurant. After a short while, he came out of his reverie and said slowly, I remember reading a case on the internet. In some foreign countries, when a child is 18 years old, most parents will make their children take exercises to develop their self-supporting life skills and become independent. But in our country, most children are pampered since childhood, even until they are in university, and after they are in their 20s, right? What's more, even at that age, their parents still provide them money to study in college, making their children live comfortably. This is, all in all, a great gift in and of itself. But if you are dating someone and spend the money from your parents so freely and easily yet again, you will eventually feel that it would be much better if you were able to earn the money yourself. After you have a certain financial foundation to support yourself, you can then once again look for the right person who you can share hardships with throughout your life. While walking alongside Tang Xiao, Jiang Fian stared blankly at Tang Xiao, who looked somewhat deep and serious. Her heart suddenly skipped a beat. The young man before her seemed to only be in his early twenties, a junior who was even younger than she was. Yet he could actually speak such a thing, making her genuinely admire him. Suddenly, she felt ashamed for her parents, because she was always spending their money to study at university without worry, and live comfortably. Even she often used the money from her parents to buy something for her boyfriend. I miss my parents, Jiang Fian said in a whisper. Call them if you miss them. Tang Xiao turned his head to look at her, and said with a smile, The deepest affection you can ever have in the world is the warmth given by your family. Jiang Fian fell into silence for a long period of time. 
As she and Tang Xiao returned to the villa's courtyard, she suddenly said, Tang Xiao, thank you. You're welcome, Tang Xiao replied with a smile. After entering the villa's hall, Tang Xiao discovered Mu Weining had already woken up and was sitting on a sofa, playing English content on her mobile phone. Oh. I thought you all had yet to wake up. I didn't expect that you actually have bought some breakfast. Mu Weining said, immediately getting up and smiling after seeing Tang Xiao and Jiang Fian come in. Getting up early and breathing fresh air outside will make you feel vigorous and energetic, Tang Xiao answered cheerfully. Wake them up. I'll also wake you Kai and the others to have breakfast. All right. Mu Weining agreed. She then looked at Jiang Fian and asked to Fian, do you feel better now? Yeah, I feel much better. Jiang Fian smiled as she nodded and said, also, I just found out a secret, too. What secret? Mu Weining asked, confused. Sis Weining, ever since I saw you, I thought there would be no man in the world who was worthy of you. Jiang Fian smiled and said, but today, I gotta take it back, since I think Tang Xiao is the right man for you. You two are simply a match made by the heavens. Though he said that he doesn't feel like falling in love while he's studying at university, I feel that he would surely go head over heels for you should you keep pursuing him. Pfft. <laughs> Mu Weining let out a rare coquettish smile, glancing at Tang Xiao and smiling sweetly. Despite my confidence that my charm is rather infinite, it's not easy to storm and capture this blockhead. Eh. Jiang Fian was pleasantly surprised. Her eyes lit up as she asked, Sis Weining, do you like Tang Xiao? He's the best man I've ever met, it's kinda natural if I like him. Mu Weining said with a smile. But his own codes kind of constrain him, and he doesn't want me from the beginning. So I can only have self-knowledge and hide, looking at him from afar, though I continue admiring him. Nevertheless, I think it's fun and interesting enough to be his little fan. Keep it up, Sis Weining. I believe in you. Jiang Fian waved her fists and mock cheered with a laugh. Okay, okay. No more jokes, will ya? Mu Weining giggled and said, anyways, I'll go call the others to wake up. Tang Xiao also heard the dialogue and knew that Mu Weining was joking, so he didn't take it seriously. He walked into the kitchen and took out a lot of tableware. He brought them to the dining room and put out the breakfast he had bought. Soon after, he dragged the Yukai and Hu Qingsong Quartet from their beds and threw them into the bathroom to make themselves presentable. Without too much prodding, everyone finally came to the dining room. Wow. Just wow. The great moneybags Tang has turned into a lovely housewife. To think that he has prepared such a rich breakfast this early in the morning. Zhao Liang rubbed his hands eagerly as he sat down. Just hurry up and eat will ya? Tang Xiao smiled and said, you can shut your mouth with that food. After finishing the breakfast, the girls went to the kitchen to wash the plates and dishes. After they had cleaned and prepared, the group took their cars and rushed to the campus. Tang Xiao's group, in particular, had to report to the classroom today, so they escorted Mu Weining's group of four to their dorm's entrances. Following that, under the watchful eyes of many onlookers, they drove away to the classroom building. Inside the history department classroom. Just as Tang Xiao's group of five entered the classroom, many of their classmates surrounded them. Most of them looked at Tang Xiao, demanding to know what tricks he had pulled in order to escape the devilish military training. Since Tang Xiao had prepared a good excuse earlier, he easily dealt with them. Da, da, da. The sound of high-heeled shoes was heard as Han Qingwu strode into the classroom, carrying a stack of documents. She glanced around the classroom before her vision finally landed on Tang Xiao for a few seconds. After that, she stepped to the podium and hinted for everyone to be quiet before speaking. Today is very good since all of you could attend the class. Anyhow, I brought the class timetable for you to attend the course later, which you'll see on the blackboard. You must memorize the contents of your class timetable, as you will not be allowed to be absent from class without leave. 
Also, if you are interested in other subjects, you can also take elective courses. Time flew by, and quickly, most of an hour had passed by. Tang Xiao sat in the bottom row seat and listened quietly to the contents of Han Qingwu's speech and the topics she was talking about with his other classmates. He could see how many times that Han Qingwu watched him, and her eyes stayed on him repeatedly. All right. Your class will be officially starting tomorrow, so all of you can have a good rest today. All students who have signed up to perform in the freshman welcoming party this evening, you all must practice well and strive to bring honor to our class. And Tang Xiao, you come out with me. Having finished speaking, Han Qingwu then turned away and left the classroom. Sighing inwardly, Tang Xiao already knew that he would be called by Han Qingwu to talk in private in another place when he saw her again. Even he could tell some of the things they would be talking about as well. At the staircase. Holding a stack of documents, Han Qingwu calmly watched Tang Xiao, who had come along with her. She had yet to utter any words and only fixed her eyes on him. After a short while, and seeing that Tang Xiao didn't seem to have the intention to speak, she frowned and grunted, Tang Xiao, have I ever provoked you somewhere? No. Tang Xiao said lightly, shaking his head. Then explain to me, what's your intention? Han Qingwu was aggravated, I've called you a few times already. Why didn't you answer even once? Besides, looking at your current attitude, you have a different opinion about me. Tang Xiao was silent for a moment. Then, he said, Teacher Han, do you want to ask me about the matter the last time we met, right? Yes, I want to hear your explanation. Han Qingwu replied without hesitation. It's my personal affair, so it's not like I must explain it to you. Regardless, I'll tell you since you want to know about it since I have nothing to hide either. Tang Xiao said. Then do say. Han Qingwu said. Have you heard about the magnificent Tang Corporation? Tang Xiao asked. Yeah, I know it's a new corporation recently established in Star City a few months ago. Han Qingwu nodded and said, this company's business has been thriving recently. I'm the owner of that said company, Tang Xiao said. What did you say? Han Qingwu gasped, disbelief covering her whole face. I said I'm the owner of the magnificent Tang Corporation. And Kong Xia, its general manager, is actually working for me, Tang Xiao repeated his answer. Seeing that Tang Xiao didn't seem to be joking, Han Qingwu was quite shocked after hearing his answer. Never in her wildest dreams had she imagined that Tang Xiao turned out to be the magnificent Tang Corp's big boss. She had always thought that she knew Tang Xiao's family situation very well. But now, from the looks it, she just realized that what she knew was not necessarily that accurate. What about the Everlasting Feast Hall? I'm also the Everlasting Feast Hall's boss, Tang Xiao answered. Though it's hard to believe that you are the magnificent Tang Corporation Hess boss, I still can accept it. But saying that you're also the everlasting Feast Hall's owner, I can't buy it. Han Qingwu shook her head and said, It's been several decades since the everlasting Feast Hall was established. Even my grandpa and his friends suffered great resistance and setbacks after they investigated the everlasting Feast Hall recently. This shows that the everlasting Feast Hall is a very powerful existence. Yet, you are just a freshman who recently enrolled in Shanghai University. How can you possibly be the everlasting Feast Hall's owner? The affairs of the world are in constant, Tang Xiao replied calmly. For me to be able to become the magnificent Tang Corp's boss, why couldn't I become the everlasting Feast Hall's owner, as well? I believe that after the matter last time, you have visited the everlasting Feast Hall's branch in Shanghai and met Qi Nan there, haven't you? Yeah, I've been there, Han Qingwu nodded and said, and I've seen Qi Nan, too. Since you've confirmed her identity, yet you still have doubts about me being its owner? Tang Xiao asked her. Han Qingwu's sensual lips wriggled a few times. She was stunned speechless by what Tang Xiao had told her. In actuality, she already believed that Tang Xiao was the everlasting feast hall's owner, yet it was very hard for her to accept it. 
After all, to think that even her grandfather was a bit afraid of the everlasting feast hall. Its boss turning out to be Tang Xiao was making her feel somewhat absurd. After being silent for a short while, she said, No wonder my good sister who came back from abroad, who I asked you to accompany her for a few days back then, told me that you were very powerful and very rich afterward. I didn't believe her at that time, but now I finally understand. But, how did you become the Everlasting Feast Hall's boss? It's a long story, and I don't think I must tell you either. Tang Xiao answered. To begin with, we are only related as a teacher and a student. I'll listen to you at the campus, but Teacher Han, you are not privileged to ask more about some private things of mine. What's the matter with you, Tang Xiao? Han Qingwu angrily said, You were not like this before. Tang Xiao stayed silent. That was true. He indeed had never been like this before. However, ever since he knew that Han Qingwu had a 99% chance of being the reincarnation of Shui Qingcheng, he had changed. For so many of the years he had lived, Shui Qingcheng was the very person he hated the most. That person was exactly this Han Qingwu before him. The deeper the love, the more hatred would incur once that love went astray. Nevertheless, since Han Qingwu herself was oblivious of her own past incarnation, that hatred of his became more complicated. Should he kill her? That was somewhat quite a depressing thought for Tang Xiao. Should he forgive her? He admitted that he couldn't do it. Since he couldn't either kill or forgive her, therefore, he would rather opt to keep the distance between them. Chapter 439, Accompanied by a Bell Staring at the reticent Tang Xiao, Han Qingwu felt like her chest was somewhat stifled by repressed emotions. It was a kind of feeling that impeded her breath and drove her over the edge. She didn't understand. She couldn't figure out why Tang Xiao had been giving her the cold shoulder more and more. You're right, Tang Xiao. I couldn't care less about whatever other identities you have. Shortly put, you're my student when you are on campus. Since you want to play concealing whatever you feel inside, then go on playing as you wish. Now tell me, what kind of show do you want to perform in the evening? Before noon, I want to hand over the list of the shows our class is going to be performing. Han Xingwu's complexion turned rather pale and more indifferent. Tang Xiao himself had actually thought last night about a good show he planned to perform. He was going to play a random musical instrument and perform whatever he liked. However, looking at Han Qingwu before him, he suddenly recalled an immortal song he had once written for her. Tang Xiao gave up the previous idea and answered lightly, I'll play a fairy dream song with a zither. Fairy dream. Han Qingwu looked dazed, and there was a bit of confused. She had never heard the title of this song before, yet she didn't know why she faintly felt that it gave her a sense of familiarity. It was as if, this song had a deep relationship with her. The feeling was not something that she could explain and understand clearly, yet it felt real and existed. Looking at Tang Xiao, Han Qingwu then nodded and said, I'll write it and report it in the list later. Having said that, she turned around to walk up the stairs and left. Looking at her back, complex emotions made Tang Xiao's heart ripple. It was like the abyss of misery inside him had turned upside down, causing him to be at a loss and make him edgy. Tap. Without him realizing it, he subconsciously took out a lighter, lit a cigarette and took a deep puff. He had fallen in love with the taste of cigarettes recently. He couldn't help but want to light up a cigarette and took a puff to pacify his emotions whenever he was in a good mood or depressed. Gimme one, Tang Big Bro. Hu Qingsong appeared in the corridor. A teasing and joyous mood filled his eyes as he sized up Tang Xiao in a playful manner. Without saying anything, Tang Xiao gave the lighter and cigarette pack to Hu Qingsong. Then, he asked, anyways, we got nothing else to do today. What do you plan to do later? What else can I do, anyway? I'm going to have a bite in the cafeteria, and then go back to the dorm to sleep. I didn't sleep enough last night and kind of have a bit of a headache right now. I can't go with you. 
There's a private thing I need to do. But I'll come back to look for you in the evening, Tang Xiao told him. Where are you going, mate? Hu Qingsong asked, sensing the unusual mood. I gotta buy something, Tang Xiao replied. As his cigarette was about to burn through, Tang Xiao extinguished it but and went down the stairs. Now that he had decided to play the zither tonight, he needed to buy a good zither before performing in the show. However, just as he took a seat in the car and hadn't started it yet, Mu Weining called him. Where are you? I'm about to go out to buy something. What's up? What will you buy? A zither. Well, I'm at the campus's entrance. I'll go along with you, then. After hesitating a moment, Tang Xiao agreed. When he drove to the campus's entrance, he saw Mu Weining in a pretty one-piece dress with her floating long hair, holding two textbooks, a brown women's bag on her shoulder. Tang Xiao lowered the front passenger's window and said, Get on board. Without hesitation, Mu Weining opened the door and sat down under the watchful eyes of many handsome boys and pretty girls in the surroundings. After closing the door, she smiled and said, Where are we headed to? I'm not sure where to, since I don't know any place that sells zithers. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, So I'll just stroll around. I knew that you would be playing the zither. Mu Weining laughed lightly and said, I believe your zither play should be on par with your calligraphy and painting skills. I'll definitely go to the campus assembly hall ahead of time tonight. Tang Xiao let out a calm smile in a response. While driving, he chatted with Mu Weining. He didn't expect that Mu Weining could also play the zither, and she seemed to be very good, as well. After browsing the web, Tang Xiao and Mu Weining found several shops that sold zithers, yet the quality of those zithers was so appalling that Tang Xiao didn't want to buy them. At this time, he couldn't help but miss the immortal zither he once had in the immortal world. Let's have lunch first. We'll continue searching after having a bite. There should be tons of places in a big city such as Shanghai where we can buy a zither. I believe we can find a very good zither, Mu Weining chuckled and said as she walked alongside Tang Xiao, gazing at the crowded area after coming out from one of the stores that sold zithers. It can only be like this it seems. But I hope I can buy a good zither this afternoon though. Otherwise, I can only pick one randomly, and then deal with whatever happens in the evening, Tang Xiao nodded agreeably. The duo randomly picked one of the restaurants and ordered some dishes. Mu Weining didn't speak much. Although Tang Xiao was not someone who treated his words like gold, he wasn't that familiar with Mu Weining to the point of being talkative with her without reserve. So he only found some topics occasionally. Still, the duo engaged in a friendly manner and got along well with one another. Ring, ring, ring. His mobile's melodious ringtone went off. Taking his mobile phone out, Tang Xiao looked at the caller's ID. It was Qi Nan who had called him. He immediately pressed the answer button and asked, What's up? Boss, the people from our headquarters have just caught an old couple. We have interrogated them and they confessed that they learned about our everlasting feast hall from you. They even requested to meet you. The people in our headquarters put them into custody and now have sent them to Shanghai. How would you like to deal with them? Where are they from? Tang Xiao frowned and asked. They are loose cultivators. The man's name is Wei Jiangping, and the woman is called Chun Xiao, Qi Nan informed him. And, where are they now? Tang Xiao furrowed his brow slightly and asked again. They are in the everlasting feast hall. Got it. I'll drive over now, Tang Xiao said. Having finished talking, he hung up the phone. He looked at Mu Weining, who was still carefully eating her meal, and said, There's something I need to deal with, eh, you. I'll go with you. Mu Weining looked up and let out a gentle smile as she said, I think you won't ditch me here, right? Tang Xiao forced a smile and said, Are you full already? Shall we go now? All right. I'm full. Mu Weining wiped the corner of her mouth with a tissue, picked up her handbag, and got up. 
Half an hour later, Tang Xiao and Mu Weining arrived at the Everlasting Feast Hall. When Qi Nan saw Mu Weining and Tang Xiao, a look of admiration filled her eyes. She found that her boss truly had many female friends, and each of them was a beauty akin to a fairy. Where are they? Tang Xiao directly asked. They are being detained in the martial arts training hall, Qi Nan reverentially said. Although he wanted to tell Mu Weining to stay and wait for him, Tang Xiao hesitated and didn't utter any words after looking at her tranquil expression. Under Qi Nan's lead, they quickly arrived at the martial arts training hall. Tang Xiao saw Wei Jiangping and a distressed-looking old lady sitting on a chair. Sitting on the chair Qi Nan reserved for him, Tang Xiao asked with an indifferent expression, Wei Jiangping, were you investigating the everlasting feast hall? A bitter expression covered Wei Jiangping's aged face. There was also an odd look in his eyes when he looked at Tang Xiao as he nodded and said bitterly, We, husband and wife, wanted to know the whereabouts of our two children. We knew the existence of the everlasting feast hall from you, so we sent some people to investigate it. The result was that all the people we sent disappeared. Hence we had no choice but to rush to Jingmen Island personally. So, you were finally discovered by our people, and then got caught? Tang Xiao asked. That's right. Wei Jiangbing sighed, we, husband and wife, have an extremely high cultivation level. We thought that only a few people in this world were on par with us. Yet ten experts from the Everlasting Feast Hall were able to hold us down and capture us easily. Even we can feel that if those people had the intention to directly kill us, we would have been slain by their knives and become ghosts now. Giving a cold snort as a reply, Tang Xiao then took out his mobile phone to call Gu Xiaoxue. After she answered, he asked, Do Light and Dark know the current issue with Wei Jiangping and Chen Xiao? They already know, Grand Master, Gu Xiaoxue's voice came from the mobile phone. What was their decision? Tang Xiao asked. They didn't want to see them. While sighing inwardly, Tang Xiao ended the call. Following that, he looked at Wei Jiangping and Chun Xiao, saying, I can spare your life this time, considering that you are the light and dark's biological parents. The capital crime can be exempted, but you can hardly run from the hard consequences. I'll let the bygones be bygones if you accept my two conditions. Please do say. Wei Jiangping quickly nodded. First, you are not to investigate the Everlasting Feast Hall ever again, and stop looking for your children there, Tang Xiao stated. They were at the Everlasting Feast Hall when you were captured, yet they still didn't want to see you. So I advise you not to waste more time and energy to scheme again. We, Wei Jiangbing hurriedly started to speak. However, just as he was about to speak out, his wife interrupted him, Boss Tang, we can accept this demand of yours. Yet in our hearts and minds, we always miss our children and are eager to see them. Could you tell us before we die of old age that you can let us see them? Yes, I'll give you that chance, Tang Xiao said. Looking at Tang Xiao gratefully, Chun Xiao then said, Please tell us the second condition, then. A slight smile appeared on Tang Xiao's face as he asked, I now need a zither and the quality should be good. Do you have the means to get one? A zither? We can do that, Chun Xiao nodded slowly. But that zither is someone's personal belonging. I don't know whether my old friend's wife would want to. If she doesn't want to sell it, you can loan it for me for one night, Tang Xiao said indifferently. It would be no problem then. I'll see her immediately, Chun Xiao answered quickly. Tang Xiao motioned to Qi Nan, and she then untied the ropes on them. Watching the couple get up, he said, I don't have much time, I must get it before 5 p.m. Please don't worry, Boss Tang, Chun Xiao nodded. As the couple left, Qi Nan asked curiously, Boss, what do you want a zither for? That's because of her good deed. Tang Xiao forced a smile and said, She signed me up to perform a show in the freshman welcoming party held by the campus tonight. Hence, I must go on stage to perform something. Boss, you are also a zither player? 
Chi Nan was amazed and said, then, I'll be sure to appreciate your playing skills tonight. Tang Shou secretly rolled his eyes and said snappily, aren't you already busy with the restaurant? If you are not busy, just roll back to Jingmen Island and go into seclusion there. Chi Nan covered her mouth as she giggled at him. Chapter 440, Jade Wind Zither Tang Xiao led Mu Weining back to the car. She hadn't spoken a word from the start. After leaving the everlasting feast hall, the duo just sat in the car, and only then did Mu Weining say with a smile, Tang Xiao, the more I get to know you, the more I think you're unfathomable. I know some things about the everlasting feast hall. I heard that its headquarters is on Jingmen Island, but it also has branches in Shanghai, Beijing, and Hong Kong, and its business is very prosperous. It's just that it never came to my mind that you were the everlasting feast hall's owner. I'm nothing but your average layman, if you ask me, Tang Xiao replied. If you were nothing but an average person, I'm afraid that there are no powerful figures in this world, no? Anyhow, I'm really curious about something. Aside from the magnificent Tang Corporation and the Everlasting Feast Hall, how many industries do you have exactly? Mu Weining asked with a smile. Well, I only have those two, Tang Xiao answered her easily. I don't believe you. Mu Weining shook her head as she smiled. If anything, I must get along well with you more in the future and learn more of your secrets. You know, you're someone I'm most interested in, there's no else. Have you ever heard the saying that a woman won't be far from having her heart captured once she's interested in a man? Tang Xiao grunted. To fall in love with someone as outstanding as you, is not a bad thing, no? Mu Weining laughed lightly, needless to say, though, a marriage is always the most important event in all one's life. Like this, the issue is solved right away. The current era is an age of materialism, where people crave worldly things. Nowadays, people's minds and hearts are fickle and unable to endure their desires. So to speak about a femme fatale, the more outstanding the women around men are, the more troublesome things they will encounter. I myself have liked living a chaotic and tumultuous life. I want it to be peaceful and tranquil, so that I can do my own things without worries. Therefore, I dare not have any thoughts toward the capital's first beauty, as well as the Shanghai University's first campus flower. So please find another man if you want to get married, stated Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao, how come the words you said make me feel like I'm just one of those sorts of venomous serpents and wild beasts? Mu Weining coquettishly feigned anger. You're better than any vipers and beasts, though, because your looks are more eye-catching than they are, Tang Xiao chuckled in reply. Pfft. <laughs> Mu Weining couldn't help but burst into laughter, laughing till she swayed and trembled. After a short while, she looked at the passing scenes outside the window, and then asked, You already asked that couple to help you find a zither, so where are we going next? I can't put all hope on them, so I might as well prepare for both eventualities. Tang Xiao noted thoughtfully. Though they are anxious and in a hurry, there's nothing that can be done about it if their old friend's wife doesn't want to lend it out. Anyways, let's surf the internet once again. See if there's a shop selling zithers nearby. All right. Mu Weining took her mobile phone out and began browsing the internet. At the outskirts of Shanghai. Inside the fruit orchard, Wei Jiangping and Chun Xiao had just returned and got out from the tax. They saw Han Jintong and his wife, Yin Yui, waiting in front of a black Audi car. Wei Jiangbing strode up to the Han Jintong couple and said with a bitter smile, Old friend, sorry for troubling you. Brother Wei, we naturally won't sit still since you have troubles. Han Jintong shook his head and said, Anyhow, we also brought the Jade Wind Zither. It's in the car. Showing his gratitude and relief, Wei Jiangbing said, I know that Jade Wind Zither is UES favorite thing. It's fine if you don't want to sell it, though. He said that he only wanted to borrow it for one night. Who is this he? Han Jintong asked in surprise. Tang Shou. Wei Jiangbing replied with a sigh. Han Jintong frowned and asked, Brother Wei, what had happened exactly? 
Did the two of you go to Jingmen Island, investigate the Everlasting Feast Hall's information, and then meet Tang Xiao there? Wei Jiangbing shook his head with a bitter expression. We didn't meet Tang Xiao at Jingmen Island, Chun Xiao faintly sighed, and said, after we followed the investigation track, we found that the Everlasting Feast Hall was very mysterious. But unfortunately, just as we only got a bit of information from our investigation, the people from the Everlasting Feast Hall found us. We did repel two of them who warned us, but we were then finally surrounded by their ten experts. Those ten were only in their thirties or forties, yet their joint forces were able to deal with us easily. We were caught and detained, and they sent us to the Everlasting Feast Hall in Shanghai. What? Han Jintong and Yin Yui looked at each other. They knew how strong Wei Jiangbing and Chun Xiao were. In this current age and time, the number of people who were their opponents were very few and far between. How could only ten people of the Everlasting Feast Hall be able to capture them? This? Wasn't this way too inconceivable? Wang Jiangbing forced a smile and said, What Chun Xiao said is all true. We were injured and captured by them. In actuality, we could sense that their cultivation levels were inferior to us. But their moves and styles were very sharp, swift and fierce, and they also used exquisite killing moves. If they were to fight at close quarters with weapons, perhaps they would only need five people to beat us, and we might be killed in a very short time. Han Jintong shivered inside and asked, How many experts does the Everlasting Feast Hall have exactly? I'm not sure. Wei Jiangping shook his head and said, there were more than 30 people just from the number when they surrounded us. Some of them who seemed like not your ordinary experts and had some status didn't even act. Han Jintong was silent for a period of time and faintly sighed, we always felt that our strength was already amazing enough, and had reached the extreme point after obtaining that cultivation technique and practicing it for decades. We always thought that there were only a few existences in this world who could become our opponents. Only now did we finally realize that we had been looking at the sky from the bottom of a well. China is a vast and ancient country, where hidden dragons and sleeping tigers remain in concealment, and it has been giving birth to talented people from generation to generation. Wei Jiangping sighed and said, Since there can be an existence such as the Everlasting Feast Hall in this country, I'm afraid there are also other powerful forces, as well. Furthermore, I'm afraid that we will find it very difficult to make a breakthrough and ascend to heaven. The only hope we have now during our lifetime is to be able to see our son and daughter who were taken by her. A glint flashed in Han Jintong's eyes, and he then asked, Brother Wei, what do you think if we can show some goodwill toward Tang Xiao? Can we? I think you should give up on this idea, Brother Han. Wei Jiangbing shook his head and smiled bitterly, the Everlasting Feast Hall's people are not a friendly bunch, definitely. Besides, if you want to have a breakthrough in your cultivation with aid from the Everlasting Feast Hall, I think it will be a close to nil possibility unless you pay a very heavy price for it. I don't want to give up trying. I'm unwilling to do so. I need to find opportunities to see Tang Xiao again, hoping that I can get the opportunity to have a breakthrough. Han Jintong answered with determination. Wei Jiangbing suddenly had a change in complexion, and said, Brother Han, if my inference is correct, your granddaughter and Tang Xiao should have a special relationship. But Han Jintong replied with a helpless expression, that girl. Qin Gu hasn't returned home since the matter last time. She even gave perfunctory reply and hung up when I called her to ask about it. I only know that Qin Gu was once Tang Xiao's class teacher in charge in high school. Now she teaches at Shanghai University and is also Tang Xiao's class teacher in charge yet again. But I know nothing about how well they get along with each other. True that, Wei Jiangbing nodded and said, Brother Han, I must go first to send this Jade Wind zither to him. I believe that he won't lie given his identity. Off you go then. Han Jin Tong said. In a certain commercial street in Shanghai, Tang Xiao and Mu Weining had found several shops, yet they couldn't find any zither of good quality. Using his keen eyesight, though there were several zithers that were barely able to be played, 
The tone effect after playing them was much worse than expected. Just as the two felt helpless, Tang Xiao received a call from Qi Nan and learned that Wei Jiangping had already sent a zither to the Everlasting Feast Hall. I hope Wei Jiangping has a bit of ability to find a good zither. Otherwise, I can only buy one randomly and deal with the aftermath later in the evening. Tang Xiao sighed. As tranquil and gentle as she always was, Mu Weining smiled slightly and said, Well, I believe that even if it is a very ordinary zither, it will still produce the most beautiful notes after you play it. Tang Xiao smiled in response and then drove back to the everlasting feast hall. Inside the general manager's office, Qi Nan and Wei Jiangbing stood before the sofa while the zither was placed on the tea table. However, its body couldn't be seen since it was wrapped in silk cloth. After Tang Xiao entered the office, his gaze fell on the tea table. Is this the zither you brought? With a respectful look, Wei Jiangbing nodded and said, I borrowed it from an old friend's wife. This zither is called the Jade Wind Zither, a masterpiece that was painstakingly crafted by a grandmaster in the Qin Dynasty period. I know nothing about a zither, though, so I dared not evaluate the quality of this zither. Tang Xiao walked in front of the tea table and gently opened the silk cloth. In front of him was revealed an exquisitely crafted and beautifully carved zither. He could identify at a glance that the zither was made out of the wood of gold Phoebe cedar tree. Ding! A pleasant tune was produced when Tang Xiao's fingers plucked the strings. This zither is barely passable. Not bad. Tang Xiao nodded and looked at Wei Jiangbing as he said, You can go. Come here again to take this zither tomorrow night. Wei Jiangbing hesitated and was about to speak out something. But when he looked at Tang Xiao's indifferent expression, he swallowed the words he wanted to say. He nodded silently, turned around, and left. Wrapping the jade wind zither up again with the silk cloth, Tang Xiao picked it up and said, Qi Nan, if you come to Shanghai University tonight, wait until after I go on stage, and then bring this zither back with you when you leave. Also, I need you to do one thing for me, find several good-natured housekeepers. All right. Qi Nan answered respectfully. I'll contact you later. Okay. Tang Xiao nodded and left the everlasting feast hall with Mu Weining. The duo didn't go directly back to the campus, but went to the Blue Star Villa complex instead. There were still a few hours left before the freshman welcoming party tonight, so they decided to rest first, and then go to the campus after dinner. Inside the villa. Mu Weining had just finished a phone call when she said with a smile, Tang Xiao, tonight's freshman welcoming party should be fun and interesting. Why do you say so? Tang Xiao raised his brows and asked. A friend of mine just called me, saying that since our Shanghai University holds a freshman welcoming party tonight, a certain authoritative figure from our campus, by means of a special relationship, has contacted Zhang Xinya, who is currently preparing for her concert in Shanghai. I heard that the opening ceremony of the freshman welcoming party tonight is exactly listed as Zhang Xinya in the program list. Thank <music> you.